Welcome, this is the 2.3 Ready, Set, Go Solutions. Here's the ready part, All right? They're just asking us to compare the slope. Here I say A and B, A is in the chart, B is in the graph, All right? So A is smaller, B is larger, because here the slope, if you count, it should be six over one. Here the slope looks like it is only one over five, okay? This one is one over six. This, no, this is six over one. All right, you're going up six units, one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one. All right, that is why this is bigger. You could also graph this, then compare it, either or. Okay, number two, this one is has a larger slope because you see how it is increasing faster. Do you see right here? It's lagging behind, then it shoots up here. It doesn't lag that much. It just shoots automatically up. So B is bigger in that case. Three. Lee has $25 withheld from his salary to pay for his subway pass. So this is linearly decreasing 25. Here, uh, he promised to pay back half each week until his debt is paid. So he pays 25 the first day, then he pays what $12.50, right? Then half of that, which is $6.25, right? Here, you're always subtracting 25. So this would be the largest decrease of the slope right this would be a steeper slope downwards four uh you see that it's going to each term so six. Oh, this is a trick question oh this is wrong hold on watch this look they tricked you <laughs> i got tricked in the question i thought that was the answer hold on look they tricked me because here it's figure one, figure two, figure three. It's going up by one each time, right? But in this case, that's not the case because watch this. It's because each term is there's a gap. So it's going six to 10 to 14 to 18. So there's actually a missing gap. Hold on here. Let me show you. Look, there's a chart here, right? It starts with it starts with six, right? Which is thirteen, but there's a gap seven, eight, nine, ten, which is gonna be fifteen, then eleven, twelve, thirteen, then fourteen, then it's a seventeen, right? So it's literally, so there's, this becomes 13.5, it becomes 14, then this becomes 14.5, 15, 15.5, 16, 16.5, then 17, all right? Notice how they're missing that gap. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that the first time, all right? So it's this, the A is going up by 0.5. B is actually going up two each time. So do you see how it's adding? This is three, and this is three plus two more, which is five. So literally, B would be the correct answer. So let me change this, All right? So let me change this. Hope, All right? Hopefully that clears it up, okay? All right? Because the answer is actually right the answer is only b because b is going up by two each time all right let me grab the image for you here oh i thought both of them uh, <laughs> was it but that was wrong right i showed you the work here okay don't get fooled make sure you're checking the um, input the domain okay because here the domain was going up by one, so the domain here also has to go up by one, right? Is this right too? So, so this is weak, and this is also weak, yeah. The domain has to be the same, okay? All right, next one. Uh, y equals two, five to the x here. Uh, they give you scenario here, but I know that every single time you put one into the object, two of the same object comes out, right? That would be considered the common ratio that's why the twos here and it starts off with five so the first term is five so you compare these two b would be bigger right these are both the explicit form of the geometric equation or exponential okay 
next. All right, set. And based on each of the given representation of the function, determine if it's linear, exponential, or neither. The population of a town is decreasing at a rate of 15.1.5% per year. It is exponential because there is a rate of 1.5, right? The population is decreasing. So the R here, right? I can just show it to you. So this 1.5% is really uh, 0 0.015, right? Good. So that means the um, decay rate is 1 minus 0 0.15, okay, which is 1 subtract 0 0.015. 0.985. There you go. Good. There's some extra calculation if you want to see it. Next, uh, seven. Joanne owns a salary. Um, earns a salary of thirty thousand per year plus a four point five percent commission on sales. That means she's gaining that on top, right? It is exponential because there's a rate of four point two five percent. Her commission percent is a percentage, right? So it's non-constant. It depends on something. Okay. So it is exponential. Next one, 3x plus 4y equals to negative 3. It is linear because the equation can be rewritten as y equals mx plus b. Nine, the numbers of day of gifts received in that song, right? On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. All right. For those students who are watching this video, do not make fun of my singing. All right. I was in choir in high school. All right. My voice is decent. All right. So here it's linear because the rate is decreasing um, by one unit per day. Okay. Right, the four, three French hens, two turtle doves. Do you see how it's going down by one? And a pear tree in a pear tree. There's one of that. So three, two, one. Okay. Number ten, you have that graph. Right, it's curving downwards. It's exponential because there is a slope that is decreasing rapidly. I wrote rapidly to show that it's not constant. Right. It's exponentially decaying. All right. Number eleven, we have this. This is neither, right? There's no constant slope nor a common ratio. This would be, I think, quadratic, right? Next, go. For each geometric sequence below, find the missing term in this sequence. We have that, okay? Uh, some, some is missing. I actually filled it in already. So here's the, this is the explicit for the geometric sequence right or this is the equation for the exponential however you would like to understand it they're the same thing the first term here is that refer to that and this is going to be the fifth right so my first term is two okay that's how i got two here right the r value the n value here is five so five minus one is four the 126 goes into here. Divide by 2 to both sides, it becomes 81. How do you get rid of the to the power 4? You power 1 fourth to the other side. So 8 to the 1 fourth power is to the 3. So r equals to 3. Once I do that, I can fill in this chart. Next, again, same thing. I wrote the explicit equation for the geometric sequence or the exponential function. Okay? The first term is 1 ninth, the r, and the n value that I'm using is, I think I'm, I was using this one, right? Plug in 4 into n, that, that is how I got my 3. The f of y, so here, this would make more sense if, right. does that make sense, right? So this becomes negative 3, okay? So multiply by 9 that's how you get rid of the 1 ninth it becomes negative 27 equals to r to the third you want to um, take it to the one third power to get rid of this 3 then you get r equals to negative 3 okay here's a note this is actually very shady All right it's okay now but in reality this would actually be the wrong answer technically 
but this is an odd function. It behaves differently. But because in high school, you're going to deal with something called imaginary numbers, you cannot actually take the square root of a negative number. Okay? That's the hard, that's weird. So in this case, it worked out because this is an odd. It's to the power 3. But you can't square root an even um, negative. Okay? It's, your high school teacher is going to explain it. But notice, this is kind of shady. Okay? All right, next. Okay, I can explain this graphically if you want to see it in class. Just let me know. Uh, again, um, start off with the explicit equation. I'm using the first term is 10. Uh, the I'm using this one. So the n value is 5. The f of n value okay, was your 0 0.625. There you go. Divide by 10 to both sides, then take it to the square root of 1 fourth. R is equal to 0.5 or a half. Same thing for 15, right? It starts off with that's the explicit. Plug it in. So GZ4, that's what I have, right? And that's the first function was G, R, and I'm using. 5, so 5 minus 1 is 4. Notice G is the same, so they cancel out. 4 is the same. The only thing difference is R was now Z. So R equals to Z. Good. Again, you could just I it and solve it, or just plug into the equation and start canceling out terms. Either or works. 16. Okay. Ooh, I didn't write this one. All right. Here's the explicit. Negative 2, 4, 3 goes right there. So the 5 minus 1 begets you my 4. So subtract 3 to both sides. 81 is what happened. It's positive. Perfectly works here. S take it to the square root of 1 fourth. It gets you r to the 3 power. So this should be 9. And this should be 20, negative 27. Oops, sorry. And this should be negative 27 times 3 should be negative 81 then times that ooh, ooh, wait wait hold on something's off something's off negative positive negative positive and negative yep okay next one 17 is down here yep all right find the rate of the slope for each of the exercise below all right this is geometric that's why you have to set up the equation here you could also set up the equation but it's arithmetic Sorry about that, uh, but here this is arithmetic, so I'm just going to end up using the slope formula. Okay, I highlighted the first th uh, x term I'm using negative five. The second one is negative three. The first y is eleven, and the second y is four. Okay, this just comes from the order pairs in the chart. Slope formula: y two minus y one over x two minus x one. Plug it in. Simplify gets me negative 7 over 2. Okay, same thing here. I grab the first two order pairs 3, 13, 8, and 23. My first x here was 3, my second x here is 8. My first y here is 13, my second y here is 23. Slow formula again, plug it in to the equation, use a calculator, right? m equals to 2. Okay, all right, good. Because you can't really look at it and eye it, right? Because it doesn't go up by one each time, that's why. Next, 19, right? Because notice how these, I just use the first two. You can use whichever two you want. This one, I decided to use the bottom two, okay? My first one, negative one. My second x is two. My first y here is 32. My second y is 38. Plug it into the equation, 38 minus 32, divide by 2 minus negative 1, you get slope is equal to 2. Here's 20. Here are the points. There's only two points. The first x is 2. The second x is 8. The first y is 5. The second y here is 29. Here's the equation. Plug, plug it in. Get you 4. Okay. Next, 21. It's in a graph. Again, you want the points, so I decided to grab the two points. Make sure it's right at the intersection so you can get a whole number. I got negative 2, comma 0 and 2, comma 1. 
you always go left to right, okay? So the first term is this, the negative 2, comma, 0, and the second term is 2, comma, 1. So the first x here is negative 2, the second x here is 2. The first y here is 0, the second y here is 1. All right, here's the equation. Plug it in. Slope is equal to 1 fourth. You could even count it. Go up by 1. My y changed by 1, right? My 4 is my change in my x. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There you go. Next one, here are the points, same thing. x1 is negative 3, x2 is 8, y1 here is 7, y2 is 29. Okay, here's the equation, plug it in. All right, then you should get a slope of 2. There you go. All right, when it is arithmetic, you could just use the slope formula, very straightforward, but again, when it's geometric, right? you have to end up using your formula method. Okay, all right, there you go. Those are all the homework solutions.